Welcome back to HowToAV.TV over at ISC. You've been joined by David Mayer of the CEDIA training team. Mm -hmm. David, I know you've got a lot of technology training going on yes. throughout the show this week. But one of the, the key issues is, of course, and we're seeing it throughout the show, is AV over IP. Yes. Um, but it's not as simple as one single platform. There are a number of different platforms. Where, um, there's so much coming through from HD Base T. Yeah. SDVOE is, is uh, fairly new to the market. Yeah. We've just seen Dante have launched their new Dante AV as well. So there is not one single standard. There are a number of platforms out there. What can you tell us about the different platforms? Do they fit into different applications? And which ones are the ones that we should be running with? Okay, yeah, as, as for which ones we should be running with, I'm not sure whether, whether we can actually discuss that, but the, the reality is there's actually more options available now than there are actually vendors, um, which, which sounds crazy, but um, the reason is that there, some vendors are actually selling more than one option. Now, AV over IP is a, it's a great solution. Um, it's an option for, for distributing um, in-home video around the home. Um, it's, it's an alternative to something like HD Base T Matrix, um, which has been popular for a few years now. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly emerging technology. Um, even though it's been around for a number of years, we haven't really had the, the chipsets and the, the technology, the, the sheer grunt that's required to actually make it work. So, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of options out there. Okay, so for some of our viewers, we know AV over IP, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. Some of us, it's still very, very new. So, the simplistic yes. version of AV over IP, what, what does it stand for and how does it differ from standard cable? Okay, so um, AV over IP is, is talking about IP as in um, internet protocol. So, it's sending internet-like packets of data over a, a network um, as opposed to sending it through um, an HDMI or an HD base T type, type data structure. So um, some big questions around AV over IP. One big one is, well, what's taken so long? Because like you say, it actually has been around a long time. But why now? Why does there seem to be this buzz about it now? Um, when um, really what it's going to come down to is the, the, the quality and the capability of the processes for um, compressing the video. I find it ironic though that it's right at the time where we're talking about bigger and bigger images. Um, we've gone from 1080p to 4K and now we're going from 4K kind of 24 frame to 60 frame and now we're talking about 4K 120 and 8K um, all at the same time as we've got compression um, codecs and, and engines that are being developed to make the file sizes and therefore the transmission speeds low enough that we can send them over a network. But the, the complexity of AV over IP is, um, is a lot lower than it is with um, other types of distribution, which is centralized. Like um, a, a matrix switch, for example, the matrix which sits at the, at the core. Yep. It's at the center, and it distributes the signal around from there. The control is back to the core. With AV over IP, it actually decentralizes the system. We're not set to uh, a fixed dimension of a matrix switch. You buy an eight by eight matrix, and you fully populate it, um, then, you end up with a client that actually says, I want two more displays, what do you do? Um, you either upgrade or you start splitting out and sharing. Um, and we get some pretty big AV over IP systems, um, or actually, sorry, going back to the matrix, which um, uh, 32 by 32, 64 by 64, they, yeah. they can get into tens of thousands of dollars. And who's ever gonna connect 64 sources? We may end up with like six or eight sources in there because we want um, we, we want 40 displays. Yeah. So it seems like a, a rather obscene cost to, to go that way. Um, AV over IP is infinitely scalable. We use a off-the-shelf standard switch at, at the core. It can be either one, ten, a one gig or 10 gig. Uh, that's the big question right now, is what do we have? And there seems to be um, a, a lot of opinions, as many, well, there, there are two different camps. It depends who you talk to. SDVOE, for example, they're based on 10 gig, so of course they're going to say we have to go 10 gig. Everything's going that way, um, but there's a lot of great 1 gig solutions out there as well. 
And you were mentioning earlier on, it, it's important to understand that that HD Base T, that STVOE, that Dante isn't limited to just one manufacturer, it's not limited to just one brand. Yeah. It is uh, a shared platform between a number of different manufacturers of sources, of displays as well. So first of all, how, how do the, the, the hybrid technologies and the software based technologies, those different platforms, how do they differ and, and do they have different applications, let's say for residential or for commercial? What it comes down to with AV over IP is because we're, we're talking about having to compress images, yep. especially the one gig solutions, they all have to use compression. We're not wanting to send very low grade standard definition signals, we're talking about high def signals. Um, the 1080p60 signal requires four and a half gigabits per second on HDMI. We want to send that on a one gig network, we're going to have to compress it. We want to send multiple streams at once on a one gig network, we're going to have to compress it more. So there is a, um, there's a degree of what does that mean for picture quality, what does that mean for latency, because compression takes time. So what we're seeing is this great evolution of, of products that are, that are getting better and better compression, but um, one gig, 10 gig, that, that really comes down to a design decision, which is going to suit better. Um, if there's some Wi-Fi, there may be some points that you simply can't get cables to. Um, some homes, the, the construction, it might make it impossible. And a couple of displays in there that need to go Wi-Fi, then installing only a 10 gig solution in a, in a home like that is, is going to exclude those Wi-Fi points. Because Wi-Fi is simply not that fast. So there's a lot of design considerations and I would never suggest choosing one solution and then sticking with only that in every install. Be adaptable. Look at what's out there. Don't expect interoperability between brands because, like I said, there's, there's a whole bunch of different ones. You, you can't mix and match. But the scalability of AV over IP is, is exceptional. So if somebody has four sources and they've got eight displays, you can buy four transmitters and eight receivers, plug them into the switch, configure the system, and off you go. If you want to add two more um, displays, you simply plug in two more receivers. It's really simple. And, and is there is there a point where we move from, let's say, distribution over standard HDMI cable that, that we should absolutely move towards an AV over IP platform? Is it, is it about scalability? Is it number of displays? Is it distance that we're sending the signal? When, should, when, when do we need to make that, that jump? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, what I, uh, we've just come out of a class talking about HDMI 2.1 and, and where things are going. We've got um, high frame rates, we've got HDR, we've got wide color gamut, increasing resolutions. One question is, do we need to distribute that? Or is that just for the primary displays? So it could be that there's a, um, we've got media room, dedicated theaters, primary displays, the big screens in the home. We want the best today. Um, so connect those differently. Don't necessarily include those in a distribution system. So we may look at, at, at fibre or an active optical cable or some technology that's going to get us the best possible bandwidth to those displays. And then for the rest of the system, um, push into an AV over IP system as, as a, a design choice alternative to a matrix switch. They're both still valid um, and it's going to be case by case depending on, on, the, on the install. Yeah. There's, there's a lot to consider. Um, about how to handle the splitting of those signals too. But the other point to consider with AV over IP is we need to make that distinction of IP distribution of in-home content versus what people are actually increasingly watching and that is streaming content. Yeah, yeah. Which is also IP, but that's IP as in WAN, Wide Area Network Internet. Not to be confused with an internal a private network, which is what we're talking about with AV over IP. So um, the irony in all of this is we may have a declining need to actually distribute content within the home. Somebody has a NAS server, they've got a, a, a Plex server for example, um, Gladiscape, um, Blu-ray player, uh, really what people are wanting to distribute around the home from in-home content are things like cable or satellite TV services or terrestrial TV. Um, and. To, to other other points. You, know, you may install another display in the home, we don't have a TV point there, we don't have a cable point, you don't want to pay for another cable box, then we want to distribute that content. That's fair enough. 
but more and more people are watching stream content. So if we've got displays that are being installed that have apps already in there, yeah, it's a yeah. smart TV, meaning it's just connected, it's not necessarily smart, it doesn't make me feel any smarter, then really they don't need big bandwidth for that. They need an internet connection with sufficient speed in their internet connection. Um, even Netflix is suggesting 24 megabit is, is what you need to stream their high-end content. That means you can get potentially 4K 60 with HDR type. We're talking more like 15, 16 megabit if you're going to watch a normal 4K movie, like 4K 24 frame movie. So we need to make that distinction between the streaming content and distributed content that begins in the home. So, and even cable TV, we're talking about the cable box is sitting in the home, so yep. it's still in-home content, even though it's coming through a dish or through cable into the home. So, um, how are people going to want to live? What are they going, what do they want? What's the cabling infrastructure? You can use Cat6 cabling, existing network infrastructure in the home on a shared network, or potentially um, some of over IP vendors are recommending a separate network. Uh, is that practical? Are we going to pull new cables for that? Um, there's a lot of design choices, but a lot of options. So there's some great technology out there, and it can really, really work. I guess uh, some of the tips that we we need to consider when thinking about AV over IP. What are the main things? First of all, that we shouldn't just assume that one uh, manufacturer and another manufacturer using the same platform that they're just going to work. We need to make sure that we're testing that those systems are compatible first. Yep. Bandwidth, of course, is really, really key to the network in yes. the building. So certainly in a new build, then you can design that in, but if you're retrospectively putting in over an existing network, you've really got to understand the, the bandwidth capabilities of that infrastructure. What else do we need to be thinking about to make sure that this is going to work, David? Well, the, the infrastructure itself, the cabling that's in there is, is probably going to support even a 10 gig network. A regular CAT6 cable will actually support a 10 gig network up to 50 meters or so, which is usually enough in most residential applications. So um, the, the, the cabling infrastructure is fairly simple. The switch, on the other hand, you have to make sure that you get a switch which is going to be compatible, and that choice is where you make the, the 1 gig versus 10 gig. Which one do I go for? Um, and, and that partly comes down to the choice of the whole system. Uh, which system do we want to go for? Um, and what are the deliverables? Um, STVOE is a, is a great solution if you want the maximum performance and the absolute minimum latency because they hardly compress. There's a lot of content that don't compress at all. So the latency is, is zero. But the switch itself, you, um, you need to have just a good, robust network in place. You do need to be proficient with networking and that, that is a, a critical element. And make sure that you then follow um, the vendor's recommendations on compatible switches. Do you need to set up VLANs? Do you not? Um, uh, IGMP snooping? And there's a whole bunch of other considerations in play. So um, if, if you're interested, um, anyone that's, that's, that's watching that is interested in pursuing AV over IP and you haven't tried it yet, there's, there's some investigation to be done. Uh, but there is no one size fits all solution. There's actually a bunch of alliances out there. There's, there's not, not necessarily standards in place. And uh, I don't think there's any one that can just profess to be the solution that is kind of the, the, the holy grail. So if, if we're looking to consider AV over IP as an installer, as you mentioned, David, there are some, some great training academies from Cedia. How do we find out about those? Uh, go to cedia.net and, um, and look through our, our training. Um, we actually do have some, some white papers on various topics as well. There is plenty more information on AV over IP on howtoav.tv. We've got more videos on IP, on Ethernet. Cedia, as you say, cedia.net have got some incredible training courses available throughout the world, throughout the year, and, and more added all of the time. David, thanks for all of your brilliant information. Thanks for joining us again at howtoav.tv. Okay, thanks for having me.